in your life. Actually, I probably could just shut this off and there won't be any audio. Anyone who is joining us, we will start in about two minutes. Just getting the camera up and running. If anyone is there and can hear my audio, please comment so I know that it's working. Great, thank you, Mike. So I can look up and when I say 30 seconds, I can make sure. And let's get started. Come on out, hi Jennifer. And you should lose your watch. Mm -hmm. And let's get started. For people at home, we're going to actually work on a couple of things that we're going to start doing when we're able back in the dojo eventually. Um, some new stuff soon. So hello, Colin, Liza, and have a seat. Okay, seated back break falls together, and one, two, three, four, five, towards the front door, one, two, three, towards the changing rooms, one, two, three, and curl the ball, roll the ball, come on up to your shoulders for a moment. And we've been adding to this basic drill in our drills class, alternating crossing your ankles at the top of each one, just to give you something for your mind to occupy and also just to get a little bit of warm up with your feet. And into triangles instead. Come on up, lock your knee over your ankle, come on down and other side, same way.
and all the way down. Bridges left and right, leading with your gaze, not with your arm. So don't worry about the arm reaching up, just come at somebody, I don't use the arm, just look the way you're going and, and think about looking up and to the side, not just to the side. And all the way down, flat on your back, lazy egg beaters or leg pommels, so head and shoulders down, big circles with your feet. Another addition that we've added in our drills class, we'll add here as well. Everyone point your toes, ballet style. And now the opposite of that, hook your feet. Imagine hooking with your hooks that are your feet and pulling people towards you. Change directions, point your toes. Hook your feet. Point your toes. Hook your feet. Some of these things are going to come into play today. And head and shoulders off the ground. Non-lazy. Go. Engage that upper core. Change direction one last time. Point your toes. Hook your feet. And down. Rest. Breathe. Everyone sit on up and back up a little bit from each other. S positions, go. Alternate your legs. And now, Jen, move over to your left and Maya a little to your left also so you move away from each other. Okay. And now, watch Jennifer here because, Maya, you haven't done this in one of our classes. We're going to combine our role with our S position to come all the way to the get up. So Jen's gonna roll back and then she's gonna use her momentum to come forward, put one leg underneath her and come all the way up, yep. Not even having to use your hands at all if you use momentum. Often with this get up, I say go ahead and use your hands, but not if you have the roll behind you and that's the point. The momentum makes up for the fact that you don't use your hands and that's the point of momentum. Keep going on your own, alternating, yep. Why don't you switch which leg is underneath it, Maya, on each one too. Yeah, right. And at the very end, push your hips forward. Good, Jen, right? So that we go forward <laughs> past the leg that's underneath us. And now we're going to add something here to it. So Jen, come forward and freeze there. Maya, go sit in front of her, like on your knees. And now, what, Jen, you're going to do the exact same drill. You're going to come up to this position, but the goal is to make sure you're coming so far forward right as she gets to the top there, Maya. You're going to push on her shoulders to see if you can knock her back down. And Jen, the goal should be that you don't fall back down onto your back. You follow? Everyone's got it? Okay, let's give it a try. So Jen's going to roll back. She comes on up, and right at the very end, Maya pushes, right? And Jen tries to lean forward. Okay, go do two more, and then Maya, you'll go. Wait until she's all the way up towards you, though, Maya. Right, if you catch her early, it's definitely. Try to get your, hip, your shoulders in front of your hips, Jen, so your back supports you. Right, yeah, yeah, right, lean forward. Yeah, good. And now go ahead, Maya. So Jen, come to your knees. And so we actually, so back up. Back up, Jen. Let her do it once without you so you know where to spot yourself. So Maya, do the roll. Come on up. I think you're going to be too close to each other is the point, right? Yep, you're about right. Maya, that front foot's going to need to be more in front, and you're going to have to get over your back leg or you're going to get knocked down. Go. Push, Jen. Right, right. Yep. Yeah. Well, Jen, posture yourself up higher. Maya, stay lower. It's going to be harder. Push. See, so you're a little close. No, don't move forward, Maya. I want her to back up so that there's you are right on, on, right on top of each other. Now. Right, 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 right. Yeah, right. You got to find the angle so that it's harder to get knocked over. One more, and then you'll switch one more time each. Yes. Okay, three more each. So Jen, do it three times. Come on up. Maya, knock her down. And give each other space. Give each other space. You're too close. Yeah, right. The forward motion is pretty significant, so you need to back up. How low? Can I be this low? Like yeah, but the, 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 the one thing I would say, you absolutely can be that low. Just get your back leg a little more behind you so it acts like a, like a, well, I'm not saying, I don't mean put your foot further behind you. I'm saying the difference oh, between my when my foot is here versus when my leg is here. Here, you can even be sitting down on it, but see how it's way behind me? People at home hopefully can see it too. The, my leg being way behind me here means that when I get pushed into, it's much harder. If my foot's here, I'm going to get knocked back over on my butt. Keep going. 
Yeah, right. So you get that, what I call that kickstand principle. The leg is back. Nice. <laughs> but also, Jen, don't come up that high. It's better. It's a, you're, you're usually going for the low position. Last one, Maya. Three times. And then we'll move on to our hands. No, you're way too close. Jen, back up. You're right on top of her. See? <laughs> I don't know how you want to listen to me. Get all the way back, a mile away from her. You can reach her from far away. Last one. Okay, let's warm up our hands. Have a seat and warm up your hands, fingertips, etc. You guys know the drill. For those of you at home, it's S grip, palm to palm, wrist to wrist. Cover the watch, cover the fist, elbows, figure four. So we're going to do a slightly different Ashi drill. Jen is going to put me in Ashi Garami. Um, why don't you put me in this one? It'll be clearer for the camera. So Jen's going to slide into Ashi Garami, right? And I'm going to work on, we've been doing this in our drills class, this idea of, of stabbing with the toes and pulling with the foot. I'm going to turn to my side so I have the room to do it. If your dimensions, you know, our dimensions here, this is a little more challenging for me because of having a longer leg. Jen's going to find this really easy when we switch roles. One of the ways that I can get myself in there if I have a long leg is getting myself a little more sideways. But I'm bringing my foot over the top, and I'm leading with the toes. So watch my toes. I'm leading. You can clamp it down, Jen. I'm leading with the toes until I get underneath her knee. Once I'm under the knee, when I kick through, I've broken the position, and I'm starting to gobble up her leg. So I have the ability here, as we come there, I'm going to have to extricate my leg, but I get myself into double outside. I'm then going to put my foot inside, so we're in a switch position, and now she's going to come over the top. Go ahead, the toes come inside, lead with the toes, come inside the thigh, and now kick through. Boom. Be aware, of, go slow at the beginning if you're doing it as a partner, you haven't done it before, because as you kick through, if their foot gets stuck somewhere, it might torque their knee a little. So just be careful until you guys get, get used to it a little bit, and then she's going to insert the foot, front foot to go back to regular Ashi. Yep. If we, don't, if we stay on double outside Ashi, and I know this is a subtlety, this is like, go, go clamp it down. Clamp it down. Right. This is like an almost impossible position for me to fish inside. But Ashi, that's one of the weaknesses here is that I can get my toes inside to this position. That's where we go. All right. Come on in, Maya. And so Ashi, thread your toes in. Thread your toes in. And then get to double outside on the other side and then switch to regular Ashi so they can do the same thing. Yep. Left foot comes all the way over the top, all the way in, inside. Lead with the toes. Yep, and kick. Very good. And now you go to double outside for a second, Jen, and now bring your foot inside. Maya, take your left foot, come all the way over the top. No, don't use your hand. I mean, you can in reality, but, but you got to get in front of the knee. So bring your, your leg all the way to your chest. Look at her leg. Uh-huh, right. And now go under the thigh. Perfect. Now kick. And there you've got her leg. Switch positions. Go to double outside for a second, and then go to Ashi. Excellent. Very nice. Yo, go ahead. If there's anyone following this who is not familiar with these leg positions at all, uh, this is a lot. This is a, you, you kind of, you know, this would not be leg locks 101. This would be leg locks 201 or 102 or whatever the system would be. This is not super basic. So maybe just take a piece of it. Doing the whole thing might be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Very nice. As you guys get more advanced at leg locks, becoming a counter attacker is super valuable. Not just thinking about getting us out, but turning it to your advantage. All right, so now, Jen, swing your legs over to go to the saddle. So pass her leg, left foot inside. Okay, so now Maya's gonna do a similar thing, but this time she's gonna fish her left foot through that leg that's right there. Uh-huh, kick through and gobble up that leg. This is a nice position because what happens is Jen's other leg is stuck. Unfortunately, they're wearing identical uh, leggings, and so at home this might just look like a giant mass of black extensions, but trust me, right now Maya's in a position, and now Maya, go ahead and find the heel hook there. Regular outside heel hook, yep, very nice, palm to palm, and there it is. You're going to want to clamp your legs down, but it's okay right now. Okay, and now unwind. There's no way I don't think they do cleanly. And now Maya, find the saddle. So why don't you just pass her leg to the other side and throw your leg over the top. Uh-huh. 
Good, and cross your ankles. And now Jen, left foot goes through her secondary leg. Not the primary leg, nope. That would be if you wanted to escape, the secondary leg. Uh-huh, gobble it up, pull it over the top, and now her inside leg becomes a liability. And fall, I would, no, 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 I'd fall towards it, Jen, like normal, like go towards it and catch the heel. Yeah, otherwise you're not gonna get an angle on it. Yes. Remember, Jen, feel free, because you're not used to doing this with people smaller than you, build up. Put your hand on that heel and use that version because her feet are smaller. Because you never have to do it because everyone's bigger than you. But yeah, go ahead. Saddle into there. You probably won't need to, Maya. Unfortunately for Jennifer, she has relatively prominent heels just like me. Good setup. Last one each. Start thinking about what you want to drill on your own. Good. All right. Moving on to any escape drill that you'd like. Two minutes. we go, um, why don't you guys turn towards the front door, just so they get a little better view of the whole thing. And now you're going to go to your left, Jen. Trap the arm, make sure your hand is safe, Maya. And trap. Jen, I want to see a bridge that way first. You got to break them loose if they're bigger oh. than you. Uh-huh. You got to get the hips up before you try to roll. If you just try to roll, their knee will base out. Think of trying to get an overhook. So in other words, make her get an underhook. No, that's not an overhook. An overhook is when you have it tucked under your arm. Like think like, think, so come, no, yes. That is it underneath, right? Think like you got it tucked under your armpit. Maybe like, you know, I don't know what. By the way, for both of you, a realistic version of this, go back to the mount, uh, uh, Jen. You go on top of the mount, Jen. So a realistic version of this also is, Jen, like, which way would you, were you going to go, Maya? Left or right? To the right. So, Jen, take your left arm and, like, start to go for a choke. Like, go forearm onto her neck with your left arm. Trap the arm, Maya, now. So, like, any way, as long as you've got the arm trapped, you can do it. Go. Right. So it's often not by just like wrapping the arm on your side. That's how we drill it when you're learning it to begin with. But in reality, where it often comes out, especially in the gi, is when they go for a choke. But anything where that arm goes to the neck, now we can just gobble it up. Yeah. And Jen, I'd recommend bringing your feet in close to your butt to get the bridge more potent. Just, just figure out any method where the arm can't come out. So you figure it out. Yep, that, that right arm is a big deal. That's good. No, no, keep your right arm on her arm. It's not doing anything else. Hold on to her wrist. Yeah, just hold it there, right. So the, the, what matters there is the result, which is she can't put her arm out. How exactly does it matter? Last one, and then we'll move on to pass. I start thinking about what pass you're going to do. Also, the nice thing about that other version, you don't have to write your wrist because it's on the inside of your frames. To what? Yeah, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
scoot your button closer and all that. Yeah, don't worry about the finish. You'll make that separate, but getting to that position. I want to see a little more mine when it's your turn. Keep thinking, Jen. When it's your turn, about rotating underneath her, just like a triangle or anything else. Don't try to maneuver around her head. Get underneath. Mm -hmm. So Maya, when you're underneath, just like moderately try to maintain your guard. Don't fight it tooth and nail, but you can't just tip over and die or she gets no, she gets no indication. So don't go onto your side. Swing your butt underneath, like move, move like the hands of a clock. Get your head over that way and your feet towards me without, uh-huh. Except, no, if you're attacking that arm, we wouldn't go that way. Yeah, yeah, go the other way or attack the other arm. Yeah, yeah but see how you're still right in front of her and you're just like tipping over onto your side. Here, Jen, jump inside my guard, quick. Quick, 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 quick. If I'm attacking this arm, right, it should look like, whoa. Oh. See how I'm all the way to the side, but I'm still flat on my back. I'm not turned sideways and I'm facing her. It's now nothing to bring my left leg over her head. I won't even do it, but you get the idea. Go. Yes, yes, that's so much cleaner. And you'll end up with her not falling so far away. Mm -hmm. One more minute. No, nope, wrong arm or wrong direction. Mm -hmm. uh, no, don't go for both arms. Just work on one until it gets good. If you are attacking, you do not. <laughs> if, if you are attacking, just worry about one side. Get better at it, and then you can do the second side. It's fine to do both sides in general, but it's also. got to manage the arms. No, throw the right leg up first. Control her back. All the way up. No, 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 no. It, go, it stays there. What, what are you doing? Do what you did before. Yeah. yeah. Don't get creative. Just stick with the same movement over and over and over. And moving on to the finishes. What do you do, a Dars? Yeah, she has to turn into you. There's no Dars when she turns away from you. There's no Dars when she turns away from you. Mm -hmm. Scoot in close. Downheel both heels into her. Like, no, just pull back towards you where they are. Finish very slow. Turn the thumb up to the ceiling.
and time. Okay, let's move on to what we're going to work on today. So, um, Jen, stand up for me. Um, we've been doing in drills class, come right here, please. We've been doing in drills class this uh, offset butterfly guard. So, the, when I'm in this position, I can use all four of my limbs equally, but Jen can also get low and start like thinking about guard passing like it, right? She can go in any direction also. She can go left, right, around, over the top, whatever she wants, right? So when I decide to come into one of these guards instead, let me just pull this out all together so I don't end up shutting off the audio by leaning on it. Um, when she decides, when I go into this offset guard, it's going to be very challenging for Jen to go to, go, to, go to her right or my left. She starts going this way, and she's just running into all the limbs, right? So that's going to be less likely. It's going to start hurting her to my right. To there, she's going to want to think about passing. She's going to want to think. Now the thing is, even if I'm loose with this, I don't really want to be loose. But even if I'm loose with this, and she steps in, the nice thing is, as you start getting better at it, like I'm geared up. Go ahead, start passing to go right into an inversion, right? So I can keep my guard going very easily by inverting almost instantly from from this uh, uh, offset version of butterfly guard. But that's not what we're going to look at here. Instead. What's often the case is Jen doesn't want to necessarily cross step right away. She'll start to step the left foot out to the side and I'm hooking the back leg. What I'm feeling for is the moment that the leg gets lighter. So stand just in front of me, right? Bend your knees, get a little lower, right? So the idea is right now, this foot's not going anywhere. I can feel that it's just very rigid. But as she starts to shift her weight to the left leg, I feel this loosen, go ahead, right? And that's when I can pull it, right? And I'm very easily gonna off balance her one way or the other. She, either she might tip forward, she might try to pull the leg away, whatever. But the idea here, all we're practicing here, is we start everything neutral, I pick a side, Jen starts to step around, I connect, and when I feel it get loose, go ahead, I pull. Maybe I gobble it up into an ashi, maybe I go into a sweep, maybe, go ahead, back up a little bit. Just looking, go ahead and start to shift your weight. I'm just looking to feel her weight get off balance, right? You'll see some people go into an X-type position to attack the leg, to get control over it. But that's all we're looking at right now. So the drill itself, pick up a stance, right, is here we are, I'm, I'm neutral, and then I'm gonna shift over to her or to my right, and I'm gonna connect the back leg. As she starts to step forward, or sometimes even pull the leg away, I'm pulling it in. Just putting all these little pieces together. And by the way, come back in, when I connect here, if she gets, if I feel her get super heavy on that leg, it's not like this leg isn't useful at all. I can kick that leg into the other leg. We can start messing with people's balance. We'll get there in a minute. Come back in, Maya. And so stand on up. Let's go slow to get this right. Okay, so Jen starts in a neutral guard, elbows inside, yep, ready to go. And now Jen's gonna pull uh, offset. She pulls in there. Maya steps her left foot outside. Jen connects the left foot to the, to, to the back of the calf or the ankle or the knee, kind of anywhere feels comfortable. And now as Maya starts to lighten or try to get that leg back, Jen pulls, yep, right. All easily offsets Maya's balance. Good. Do two more from here. No, do two more. And then actually you can switch on bottom and then we'll do three for three. And we start off neutral. Wait, elbows inside, hands ready to go. We're ready to attack. But now Maya reaches back with her right hand, tucks her right foot. Yup. And now left hand is up high. And now as she comes in, hook the back foot. Yup. Just connect. And now as you feel that leg get lighter, lift it, pull. Yeah. Right, it'll fall right into ashi, it'll pull into uh, off balance, whatever. We're looking for kazushi here, the Japanese term uh, from judo of off balancing before you attack. Something that's really necessary as you go up in, in skill levels. Good, no, now you're gonna go to the right, Maya. She pulls her right leg, yeah. You didn't mean to switch, okay. <laughs> Five minutes, go. Do three times, then switch. <laughs> Don't, if the person doesn't shift their weight, Go ahead and connect the other foot. See what happens. Play with it. Mm-hmm. Nice.
right, just do your draw. <laughs> yep, it, exactly. And that's what you're aiming for every time if you can manage it. Ah. Two more minutes. One more minute. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So now, Jen, stay where you are. We're going to do what I'm going to call a feel drill. And so the idea here is to start, Jen's actually going to close her eyes. Lay flat on your back. And so connect your feet, right? And now the idea, I'm actually I'm not sure if we're visible. Come this way. Come this way. Mike, can you just see how we look in the camera? Like this way, Jen, please. Okay. And so it's okay if my head's cut off because that's not really, that doesn't matter. So now Jen's going to connect her feet. And the idea is she should be putting outward pressure just a little bit, just a bit. It shouldn't have to be hard. You shouldn't be burning up muscles here. And now, right now, my weight is even, 50-50. And what I'm simply going to do is feed to her shifting my weight. So she's going to feel me shifting in one direction. It's a lot smoother and slower than that, Jen. So as I shift to my left, she lifts with her left. I bring it back down. As I shift to my right, she lifts with her right. Right. And so then I'm going to shift like forward. I'm going to shift forward a little bit, and the back leg gets lighter. Right. When I shift backwards, the front leg gets light, right? So as I, whenever I move a foot, while it's starting to come up, it's a little bit light. But as it comes down, the other foot gets light. And so the whole thing the person on the bottom is doing is just feeling their weight and then moving their legs a little bit. None of this. Person on top, you should just be like shifting your weight a little bit. Small steps, small shifts from left to right just to get a feel. That's why we call it a feel drill, to get a feel for it opposed to... to to having to drill something visually. Come back in, Maya. And we're going to go 30 seconds each. I will tell you when to switch. And begin. Go. Eyes stay closed, person on the bottom. Person on the top, just keep shifting your weight smoothly. Person on the bottom, no anticipation at all. Just feel. Yeah. Keep your weight. Now, you get, keep your knees nice and bent, Maya, so you'll lose your balance less. And 10 more seconds, and we'll switch top and bottom. And ultimately, we do this sitting up more. We do this in a crunch, but it's going to be too much on the abs. Switch top bottom. Okay. Maya down, back on the mat, eyes closed, knees back towards your shoulders. Knees back towards your shoulders, Maya. Feet engaged. Good. And Jen's just going to lightly switch her weight back and forth. Begin. 30 seconds, right? When you feel something get light, Maya, lift smooth, not aggressive, just smooth with it. And the main thing we want to do is just keep this attachment the whole time. Very good. Mm-hmm. Ten more seconds. Stay with it. Nice. Yep. 
and switch top and bottom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is. Just harder on the abs. Halfway there, nice. And switch. My, they should be hooked both the whole time, like feel connected. Yep. And time. Very good. Yeah. Yep, that's right. All right, come on, stand above again. All right, last one we're going to do. So what's interesting, this is, uh, give me wide position, hooking in. Okay. So often, when Jen is neutral like this, what I'm about to do wouldn't work. And it's okay because she can't really get anything going other than kind of shin ride stuff, right? So, right. So Jen instead is going to step back with her left leg, put that right foot in front more dominantly, step to the inside. Okay. I need to always win this battle. I mean, not always. There's plenty of stuff I can do from here. Plenty of stuff of gripping and going from there. I win this battle. And now I'm going to take myself into an X position. Now, there's a predicate here that I need, meaning I need her to do something to make this really work. I'm going into this X guard where I'm controlling the ankle and the knee. So what Jen should do is make her leg super heavy and turn her knee back out where it was. Yeah. This, even though I'm a lot bigger, this is a big challenge for me to offset her. But what a lot of people will do here at this position is think, I gotta pull my leg out. And what that does is it's the exact wrong thing. It lightens that leg and it makes my control over it even better. So what Jen's gonna do here is either be neutral or she's gonna start pulling the leg out. But for the safety of our partners here, person here, keep the, knee, the body going with the leg. So in other words, what Jen really doesn't wanna do is face me and start to turn your knee inside. I'm not gonna do it to you. Turn your knee inside. That is how you injure your knee. Your knee goes inside where your body doesn't. But if Jen turns her whole body like she's going to run out the front door, she's fine. So as long as you keep your body with your leg, you won't hurt your knee. And then what I'm going to do, so go ahead, get your weight on your left leg for me. And I'm going to go here. Up. Actually, let's clean this up for you a little bit. Uh, take your left foot and put it here just so your balance better. And then I'm going to fall back and use this X to pull her towards me. Right. Into Ashi or anywhere else. We don't need to go that far. All we want to do is practice. We're here. Go ahead, step to the inside. I capture either ahead of time or not. Other leg goes to the back of the knee and now get her light. Boom. Yeah. That's all. That's fine. You can capture it, go further. But we want to just practice this version of the X. There's lots of different X guards inside, outside, wherever the, hand, the feet are. But here we're going front foot to the ankle, back foot to the knee. Come on over mine. No, you do not. Okay. So go to your offset, butterfly. Uh, Maya, put your right foot in front. Okay. So hook to the ankle with your left foot, Jen. And now pommel to the inside, uh-huh, and get there to then, uh-huh, yeah, you got it. Knees wide, knees wide. No, no, no. So the right thing to do would be to drive into it this way, but don't do that. Go the other way, like you're going to run away. And now, Jen, get closer to the ankle. Your, 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 bo your bottom foot needs to be more on the ankle. Yeah. The further your feet are apart, knee and ankle, the more leverage you have at the leg. The closer they are, it's like, you know, screwdriver with a big handle versus a small handle. You're going to have more leverage if you've got more leg in there. So it connects there, and now my take your right foot to the outside to the other knee. No, that foot's fine. Other one there. Uh huh. And now same thing. Get your other foot closer to the ankle. Don't overdo that, Jen. The twisting is making it a little hard. Drop that all the way to the ankle. And now pull and pull. Yep. There we go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Really gobbles up that leg. 
There's a slightly more advanced one, but the idea, everyone at home, like this is going to be kind of some of our first stuff working on is really playing. Yeah, down we go. Nice and smooth. Um, playing around with some more advanced ideas with our feet, with off balancing. Everyone is playing butterfly guard so much that we need to start getting a little more sophisticated. Nice, yeah. And now you would go to her back most likely from there. Very nice. Nice. Very good. Nice, Maya. Yep. Yep. Maybe not end up over there, or she suddenly passed into side control. But, but that's okay. We're working on components. Working on pieces. We're not working on full-fledged techniques. So, Jen, same thing. Your left foot is nowhere close enough to her ankle. It's like you're basically on either side of her knee, and you won't, you certainly won't move someone my leg, someone with my leg size. Yeah, that's better. Because then she's still in the guard cone of your knees. No? Outside in? Yeah, yeah, that, like that. Oh, careful, careful. Don't, don't, yeah. Try not to twist her ankle that far away from her knee, though. It's a, it's a reap. Because she can't move her body necessarily with it to compensate as well as she could. One more minute. Mm-hmm, nice. Yep, sure. Yeah. <laughs> 30 more seconds. time. All right, last thing we're going to do, these two here are going to work a little bit, um, just kind of a positional training. You guys at home, if you've got a partner, you can do the same. If you don't, don't have a partner, you can just rep some of the same techniques that we already did. So when you are playing an open guard, your feet and your legs do one of three things. They are either a post, and same thing with your arms, by the way, they're either a post pushing someone away, and there is what we could call like a normal post, and sometimes what we'll call like an inverted post. In other words, with the uh, inside of your foot down versus the inside of your foot up. Then there's hooks when I want to pull things in. And then finally there's frames, which is using your shin. The analogy for your arms, of course, would be posts with your hands, hooks with your arms, and frames with your forearms. Same exact idea with your legs. And so all we're going to play around here, Jen, stand up for me. Actually, Maya, you can do this time. Yeah, Jen, you can sit. Maya stands up. And like, I can use my hands a little bit. You know, we, we focus a lot, at least at our dojo. Oh, hold on. Use the audio. Nope, we're good. Um, we think about our hands as being kind of so important for our guard, and they are, but we want to have both tools. So Maya's just going to start working her way in, and I'm hooking. I'm posting. Go ahead, come on in a little further. I'm framing with my shin if she gets too right? And the idea is just playing all this. I want you to think about the movement and the positions, even inverting and see your stuff as just a platform for these three sets of tools. Posts, hooks, frames with your shins. Come on in, and you'll go a minute each. And then we'll switch top bottom. Yep, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Jen, stand up. Just You're just playing around with guard passing. You can complete it, but don't be too maniacal with it. And just be mindful about what your feet are doing. I like, think about these tools. Keep the distance away or get control over her legs. Yeah, yeah, oh, she's getting past her legs. So use your other foot as a post when that happens. Yeah. 
Yeah, there we go. Ten more seconds, we'll switch top and bottom. And switch. Go ahead. Posts, hooks, and frames. Uh-huh, right. Use the posts and the hooks to recover the guard to bring yourself back in. Allow both of them to drag your hips around. As they get around your hips, use those feet to get yourself back in front. Yeah, nice. And switch. Last two, last one each. Yep. Yeah. But again, the inversion is a tool to then use one of your feet the way that you want. It's not just a spin upside down. But as she gets away from, so yeah, as she gets there, now you got to get your left foot. No, no, no. My turn face her again. You got to get your left foot over the top somehow. So that's where inverting comes in. Yeah, right. Exactly. And now both feet are back in the game. And go one more. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, you can start putting all that together. And think, even your old stuff, tripod sweeps, regular Ashi entries, all this stuff is mixing together, right? Switch on bottom, last one. One minute, running out of time. Last exchange. And time. Very good. Give each other a high five. Thanks. Excellent. And guys at home. Um, yeah. So, you know, sometimes we do full techniques. Sometimes we do series of techniques. Sometimes we do details of techniques you guys already know. This is the other end of it. This is some new uh, skills, some new movements that are going to lead into some of the techniques that you already do. So we're starting to think with our feet a little bit more, you know, kind of going back and forth with our guard being about our feet, our guard being about our hands, just like a top position. Sometimes it's about your weight. Sometimes it's about controls and wedges. And sometimes it's going about for the submission itself. So right now, starting to get a little more active with these feet, start moving people around, getting them off balance. And again, one of the biggest differences between very experienced people and less experienced people is that balance. Experienced people are very balanced and they're not like overcompensating as much. And so we need to make them do that harder than, it, it, you know, it's not trivial to be able to get someone experienced off balance so that we can attack things. Thank you very much. If you're taking our karate class, it's in 15 minutes on Zoom. Other than that, see you guys later in the week. Oh.